Today, are we digitally ready? This is a question that teachers and learners are probably asking right now. With the advent of DepEd's Digital Rights Program, the Open Educational Resources, or OER, was woven together and finally realized. This project prioritizes the necessity to enhance the digital literacy skills of every teacher and learner in the country. Our OER mission is to connect the disconnected. OER is indeed an innovative initiative with a lofty aim to get disconnected schools and last my schools connected to ICT even without an internet connection. It is designed to cater to the need of these schools for interactivity, digitalization, and delivery of 21st century skills that will ensure that every learner is future ready. Join us in another training workshop and learn more about open educational resources. This primary purpose is to provide support and assistance to learners and teachers in this rapid advancement of technology. Our goal is to build and strengthen the capabilities of public and private teachers, school heads, and supervisors by teaching you to create and design interactive localized and contextualized instructional materials for teaching using basic, advanced, and proficiency software and tools. Surely, this will be another exciting and engaging webinar training workshop. Together, let's all rise amidst this crisis. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, para sa guro. Sulo, ito kalidad! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. There. <laughs> hello, everybody. Okay, hello to our parents, teachers, and learning and learners. Okay, so for today, we're going to um, to learn correct grammar and pronunciation. I am Teacher May, your tutor here on Italy. Today, I'm going to teach uh, grade three English. But for those who are in third grade but would love to know how sounds and words are made, you can tune in and be one of our learning mates. So, what are you waiting for? Whether you're a pen paper and self-learning module most importantly whether your hearts your minds and your ears this is english 3 okay again this is english 3 before i start let me greet everyone making comments on the comment section okay mukhang excited na po ang lahat actually ako din excited to begin our lesson for today and our lesson for today will be about uh, responses on questions on informational text because we're now on week six of quarter three. Ang bilis talaga ng panahon, okay? Pagbati po kay Lord Janway de los Santos of Don Enrique Bautista Elementary School, San Pablo City, Laguna. Ayan, isa yan sa aking mga avid watchers for English 3. Hello din po kay Nadine Ferrer of Baleti Sur Elementary School. Mark Edward, hello po sir. Present daw po si sir. Hi sir. Mainit po, no? Nako, napaka-init. And 
you know what makes this afternoon hotter? It's because of your love and support for English 3. Okay, bati pa tayo ng mga nandito na. Hello kay Yana Rain Yonado and kay Mary Dalusong, Nathan Caleb Kamaya. Hello sa inyong lahat. Okay, so mag, mag hello lang po tayo sa comment section for me to know who is already present so that I can begin our um session for today. Ayan. Thank you. Ayan po. Ito po yung uh, ilan sa mga uh, commenters natin at yung mga avid supporters ng English 3. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Okay? Let us start. So again, the lesson for today will be about responses on questions on informational texts. I know it's like two weeks ago we studied informational text. So we're going to deepen our understanding of these texts. And also, we will also try to hasten or to hone your skills in understanding this kind of text. Okay, kasi when you will be in um, grade, uh, ngayong grade 3, you are reading a lot of informational text. So I think it's a really great lesson for today because you can practice more um, how to understand this kind of informational text, all right? So for today's lesson, let me present to you the learning objectives that we have. Okay, ayan. Okay, at the end of our tutorial, you will be able to... Mm -hmm. Ito na lang. Identify what informational texts are and where they can be read. Second, practice answering informational text. And the last objective will be show understanding of informational text to be answering questions that ask for facts and details given by the text. Okay? So, important na alam natin yung ating mga matututunan ngayong session. At ito po yun, um, kids or class. Okay? So, balik na po tayo sa ating... Um, before I start the lesson, mag-review muna tayo ng previous lesson. Ang previous lesson natin is about, or yung previous lesson natin was about long vowel sounds. So, kasi I observed last time na medyo me, na marami. Actually, marami yung naku-confused pa rin, especially between long vowel sounds and short vowel sounds. So, we're going to have a run-through of um of long vowel sounds and short vowel sounds so you can really distinguish the the uh, the difference on their sounds okay let's begin with a long vowel with a long uh vowel a okay so again the long vowel a sounds like a okay so that long vowel sound can be found in these words name day made sale and stain again the long vowel sound a sounds like a okay so you can see on the i think the right side on the right side of the screen are, are examples of words or samples of words where the long vowel a sound can be found okay again a All right now let's have the long vowel e your long vowel e sounds like e e E. Now, what are the samples of words that have this sound? You have lead, lead. You have your queen, queen, honey, honey, needle, needle, and wheel, wheel. So if you notice, whenever you pronounce the long vowel E sound, it's like you're smiling because you really have to enunciate the sound. And you have to really make it uh, elongated. I mean, the sound, you, 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 you have to elongate the sound. So it's like you're smiling, right? Now let's have the long vowel I. The long vowel I sounds like I. So you can find that sound in these words. Shine, white, fly, twice, oh. Sino ba yung mga fans ng twice? Because the word twice has the long vowel I. And the last word is dime. Again, the long vowel I sound sounds like I. Okay? So now let's go to the second to the last vowel. And that will be your letter. Your long vowel O. Again, it sounds O. 
Now, the samples will be joke, hole. Is that cool? Hole, probe, throw, and no. So, if you can see and if you can observe, when teacher pronounces the words with, letter, with a long vowel O sound, her mouth also is rounded. O, joke, hole, probe, throw, and note. Because if the placing of the mouth is really different, you cannot really hit the right sound. So, pag ginagawa natin yung long O sound, yung bibig din natin, nakapormang O, nakabilo. Okay? Now, let's have the long vowel U. Again, like what I have, like what I discussed last time, the long vowel U has two sounds, U and U, okay? You might be confused with the long vowel O and with, and with the long vowel U kasi dalawa sound niya. Pero ang long vowel O ay O. O. O tama si Daisy. Um, si, si Daisy Jewel sabi niya, arrow. Yes, that word has the long O sound. Pero isang sound ng long ng long u u. So o and u. O and u or u. So very different. So what are the examples of words that have the long vowel u sound? So you have your cupid, student, jewel. Jewel. It's a g well. It's jewel. Jewel. So it has the U sound, the second sound. Rescue, you, excuse. Okay, that's so rescue and excuse. It has the first letter, uh, it has the first long U sound. Okay, now let's differentiate because some some of you are really confused with the short vowel sounds and the long vowel sounds. Okay, so katulad neto. So on the one with the arc at the top of the vowel, that means it's a short vowel sound. Pero kapag nakita niyo yung bar na medyo mahaba sa taas ng letter, that means it's pronounced as a long vowel sound. So yung, yung black, that's a short vowel A. And the way we say it is a, uh, a, uh. while yung nasa, Nasa kanan natin, yung kulay red, it is a long vowel sound. And it sounds like A. A. See? It's really different. One is A. One is A. So I hope you can really see the difference. Now, yeah, they, they really sound different. So there's no need for me to be confused because one is A, your short vowel sound. And one is A, your long vowel sound. Let's have an example. So you have your... Mat, short vowel A, and mate, mate, long vowel sound. Now let's have the second one. Again, uh, yung kule black, that's the short vowel E, it's E, E. And then the long vowel E sounds like E, E, really different, right? So you have your E and E. Again, E, short, and E, long. So what is an so let's have an example. So you have your bed, bed, and bead. Bead, really, really different. Now let's have your short I and long I. Again, yung black will be, the, will be your vowel, short vowel I. Tapos yung nasa kanan natin, yung, letter, yung color red, that's your long vowel I. So your short vowel I sounds like this. E, E, E. With the long vowel, I sounds like I, I, E, and I. Really different. Like there's a sea of difference between the two sounds. Let's have an example. So you have your knit, knit, and night, night. Napaka iba ng sound, really. Now let's have the letter O. Yung short, it is. it sounds like this. O, O. Now, for the long O sound, it's O, O. Again, O, 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 O. Really different. So, examples would be not, not, and note, note. 
Now let's have the last vowel sound. You have your short U sound and long U sound. The short vowel U sounds like this. Oh, oh, you see, it's more tense, like it's more tense than the short vowel O. Always relax. But the short vowel U is tense. Ooh, ooh. Now for the long vowel sound, you have your U, U, or ooh. Ooh, really different. Now, since we, we have really recapped on the difference between the long vowel sounds and the short vowel sounds, let's have this review. Okay, so I have this, so I have a word here. Tapos, you will identify. I may end up at the example pala. Now you have your son, son, and soon. Soon, really different. Now let's, let's have a review activity pa. For me to be confident that you really can distinguish between the two sounds. Now I have craze. What kind of vowel sound does it have? Does it have a long A or short A? Okay, so comment lang tayo sa mag comment lang tayo sa comment section whether it's a short A or long A. What vowel sound is present in the word craze? Okay, is it a short A? Or long A. Sabi ni Maritz Valeris Bande, it's a long vowel A and it was followed by Neri and Lord. Oh, let's see if that is correct. For craze, it has the long vowel A. Kasi meron siyang A. Craze. Very good. Now let's have the second word. You have the word guest. Guest. So does it have a short vowel E or a long vowel E? Si K, nag, naglagay siya na tamang symbol ng letter A. Long vowel A. Thank you for your effort, K. Uh, we're now on the second word, guest. Anong sound ang meron sa guest? Short vowel E or long vowel E? Okay, parang nauna ulit si Marites, next Heavenly, and Christopher. Tama yung mga sagot nila. For the word guess, you have the short vowel E. Bakit? Kasi it's not E, but just E. Guest. E. Very good. Okay. Parang lahat tama. Oh, si Nadine. Nadine, again, it's not long E. The, the, the word guess doesn't have a long E uh, sound. Kasi ang long E sound ay E. Pero sa guess kasi it's E. So it's a short vowel E. Now let's have the third word. Let's have... Which, which, we're now on the third word. Your third word is which. Now, does this word have a short I sound or a long I sound? Let's see. I'm now checking the comment section. Again, the word is which. Yan, sabi ni Maritis, ni Shirley, ni Prince, at ni Annie. It's as it's the short vowel I. Very good. Because it doesn't sound I, but I, which. So it, sound, it has the short vowel I. Now let's have the fourth word, toast. Again, the word is toast. Tell me if the sound in this word is a long vowel O or a short vowel O. Toast. Long ba or short? Okay, let me check your answers now in the comment section. Sabi ni Kurt Tolentino, it's long O daw. Sabi ni Yana, long O. Okay, nagsunod na yung mga sagot. And that is correct. Toast has the long O sound. Ang galing-galing naman. Now, let's have the last word. Let's have the word young. Young. So, does it have the short U sound or the long U sound? Again, the word is young. Young. Okay? Let's see. Okay. In fairness with your answers, no? Tama naman most of, tama naman most of your answers. Okay, let's check now. Okay. So, for young, it really has the short 
you sound. Ang galing naman. So that means you can really distinguish the difference between the short vowel sounds and the long vowel sounds. Very good. I'm so proud of you. I think I am now confident to move to our next lesson. And again, the lesson will be about respond responding on questions about informational text. First, what is what are informational texts? From the word information, you get the idea that these texts are non-fiction texts that provide facts and data to the readers. Now, when we say non-fiction texts, I say we have uh, uh, by meron din tayong two kinds of texts. One is fiction and one is non-fiction. When we say fiction, it is based on one's imagination. Fiction, hindi totoo. Pag non-fiction, it is based on truth, kung ano talaga ang nangyari. So we get the idea that informational texts uh, are based on things that happen in real life, based on real events, real people, real animals, real things. And the main purpose of these of this text is for us to know facts and details. Now, where can we find informational text? We can find informational text in textbooks. So when we say textbooks, ito yung ginagamit natin, no? For our subjects, mostly our modules uh, have informational text too. Procedural texts. What are procedural texts, teacher? Procedural texts are those texts that give us steps or procedures to do something. Example, cookbook. Kung paano magluto ng adobo, kung paano magluto, mag, mag, magluto ng nitsyado, paano, paano mag-fold ng paper, paano magawa ng origami. These are samples of procedural texts. Essays, especially if it's based on ones, uh, especially if it's based on real events in real um, scenarios. News, syempre, di ba, kailangan ng news dapat totoo. Hindi siya dapat, uh, hindi siya dapat based on um, lies. It should be what is really happening in our society. Autobiographies, because it's, pwede rin biographies and autobiographies. Because when we say biographies, it's about one's life. Kaso nga lang, Kaso nga lang, when we say autobiographies, you are the one to write your own biography or your own life story and magazines, okay? Now that we know what informational texts are and where we can find these informational texts, dun tayo, mag maghanap tayo ng sample. I'll be giving you a sample of an informational text, okay? So, this is about snakes. Ang title nga po natin, Ang title nga po ng ating text ngayon is All About Snakes. So let me read to you this text. Snakes are scary, yet interesting animals. They are reptiles and are cold-blooded. They are limbless, wala silang limbs, and has elongated body and tail. They can smell with their tongues. They do not have feet. They do not have ears, but they can hear through their jaw. Amazing, right? They change their skin from time to time. A number of snakes have venom that can kill their prey. So when we say prey, yung kakainin nila. Okay? Their venoms are also used to create antidote. When we say antidote, yung substance panlaban sa, po, sa poison, sa lason. Again, snake bites. Wow! So yung, yung venom nila pwedeng panlaban sa venom ng ibang snakes. Powerful. They are carnivorous. That means they eat meat. They don't eat vegetables. They eat fish, chicken, mouse, birds, bat, and other animals. Now, my first question. The text provides a lot of information about. So, or um, to cut it or to, to make it short, uh, what is the text all about? Comment in the comment section, what is the text all about? Or the text provides a lot of information about what did we talk about in this text? Okay, tingnan natin. Snakes, very good, Yana, Maritus, and Heavenly. The text provides a lot of information about snakes, no? Eto, no, when, when, we were, when we are to read a text, no, the topic also gives us the main idea, or no, the title gives us the topic or the main idea of the text that we're going to read. And since we, we have on the, 
we we have in the title all about snakes we're sure that and there's and there's a picture of a snake there in the text we are sure that the information will, will really be about snakes okay but i have a follow-up question okay so oh my gosh so oh that means i have revealed the answer actually there is a question before these answers would be flashing so the following so we have learned a lot of information about snakes right but these are the specific information that we learned about snakes first the type of animal snakes are diba sabi ng text it's are uh, snakes are reptiles and they are cold-blooded animals second there's also an information about the this about how snakes body look look like diba sabi dyan, they are limbless and has el and has elongated body and tail. We also have information about uh, uh, the body parts that snakes use for smelling and hearing. So they use their tongues to smell. Interesting, right? And they use their um, jaw to hear things around them because they don't have really ears. No, wala silang ears. So can you imagine a snake with ears? Parang strange, right? So we know now that they hear through their jaw. For, uh, fourth is we learned something about how frequent they change their skin. So sabi sa text, they change their skin from time to time. No, Lagi sila nagpapalit ng, ng, ng skin. Maybe it's for them to regulate their bodies with the changing temperature. No, minsan mainit, minsan malamig. So they have to shed some skin. I'm not really sure about that. So you, if, if you know why snakes change their skin from time to time, you can share using the comment section. Okay, we, we also knew kung ano yung mga kinakain ng snakes because snakes are carnivorous animals. Again, when we say carnivorous, these animals eat only meat. Kinakain nila fish, chicken, mouse, birds, that, and other animals. Depende sa laki din ng snake, no? Sometimes yung mga sobrang malaking snake, di ba, kumakain sila ng mas malalaking animals, di ba? Have you seen on YouTube or in other video streaming apps na yung ibang snake sa sobrang laki, kaya nalang kumain ng isang buong buwaya, crocodile, di ba? Grabe. Next, meron pa sabi ni Maritis, when they, when they, when they get bigger, they change skin. Oh, thank you, Maritis, for sharing that information, no? So, tama yun, no? to accommodate yung kanilang growth, they have to shed skin, okay? And then we also learned the uses of snakes venom. So, First, ginagamit ng snakes yung venom nila to protect themselves against other predators. Kasi yung mga predators, sila yung mga animals na hunt for other animals. So they use their venoms to protect to, to protect themselves. And one good or isa pang gamit, isa pang purpose ng venom is for is to be an antidote, pang anti-lasso, no? Sa ibang venom ng other snakes. So, it's really amazing. At, 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 and then, alam ko din, no? Yung, yung venom din ng snakes, um, in other countries, or yeah, I think in the Philippines too, meron siyang medicinal purposes. So, pwede siyang i-process and, and, and gawing medicine. So, it's it's really a wonderful thing, no? Hindi lang pala talaga poisonous ang venom ng snakes. It has a bigger purpose than that. Okay? Now, this is just an example of an informational text. Definitely, when we are to understand informational text, it's a skill that we have to develop over time. Hindi siya yung aalam ko nang mag-understand because comprehension is built through a lot of practice and reading. Okay? So we have to know that factual information or details are presented in informational text. So there, there will be a lot of facts and details when we are reading informational text. These texts provide specific details about particular person places things events and topics now means and when we are re when we are reading informational text we will be lost with a lot of information that the text provides so how can we really sort out information example kailangan ko lang malaman sino kailangan ko lang malaman saan or kailangan ko lang malaman bakit so for us to sort specific details from informational text we can use wh questions we can ask what who where when why and how so example dun sa binasa natin na um all about snakes uh 
what do snakes, sa dami ng information, you just want to know kung ano yung mga kinakain ng snakes. Your question should be, what do snakes eat? Diba? So you will land with the answer, they eat rat, they eat birds, they eat other smaller animals. Diba? So for you, again, for you to be able to get the information that you would like to get from informational text, because this text has a lot of information, you can ask WH questions to yourselves. Okay, example, why, why do snakes have venom? Diba? So that's one question. So snakes have venom because it's for them to protect themselves against other predators. And um, venom is also used as an antidote for other snakes' venom. Okay, so I think malinaw yon na we can use WH questions if we really have to get specific details from informational texts. Okay? Now, let's have a sample again. Mag-practice mag, mag pa tayo. So, I am confident that you can really understand informational text that is right for your grade level, okay? And our text will be about Calabarzon. Sino po ba dito ang mga taga-Calabarzon? Okay, can you comment uh, a heart, no? If you belong, if you are studying in one of the places in Calabarzon, okay? You can comment there. Uh, kasi I'm not from Calamarzon, I'm from the National Capital Region, but I would like to know, sino ba sa mga sudyante ko ngayon ang taga Calamarzon, okay? Yan si Jasmine, nag-comment ng heart, sabi ni Lord, taga, ano siya, taga Calamarzon, si Jasmine, si Nathan, si Ahmed, ayan. No, ang, ang dami taga, taga Calamarzon dito, and our text, our next informational text is about Calabarzon. Okay, so if if you can see Calabarzon is one of the places here in Luzon, actually it's, it's one of the regions, no? Region 4A. No? And Calabarzon means Cavite, uh, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon. Ayun marami. Sige, sila Gabriela, sila Yulene, si Zyren, si Lezel, si Rafael, Sino ba? Si? Oh, si, uh, si Bohol. Sorry, I cannot really pronounce your name because it's really long. Okay? Pero I can see that there are so many Calabarzon students here on the comment section. Hello! And the text will be about your region. Okay? So, dun, dun na tayo sa text about Calabarzon. Let me read it to you. Quezon Province is the largest province in Calabarzon in terms of land area. The province is divided into two cities and 39 municipalities or towns. So it's really big that it has two cities and 39 municipalities or towns. Kaya naman pala. Okay? It is the largest in terms of land area. And it really has lots of cities and lots of municipalities too. Now, Lucena is its capital city. Kalilayan was the first known name of the province. So, the first, before it became Quezon Province, the first recorded name of Quezon City is Kalilayan. It was later renamed Tayabas. So, Kalilayan to Tayabas. In honor of the former governor of the province, who later became the second president of the country, Manuel Luis Quezon, the province name was then changed to Quezon. So that's interesting to know. Sino po ba dito mga taga Quezon province? Is there someone here na, na, na taga Quezon province? But I really like the history of your city, you know, from Kalilayan to Tayabas to Quezon province. And Quezon province is like Quezon's province. That's why it became Quezon province later on. Wow, that's so interesting. Diba? Ang dami natin nalaman about Quezon province. But I will be giving you five questions about the text for me to check if you really have understood the details and the facts given here. Okay, let's have the first question. What is the largest province in Calabanzon in terms of land area? So in the comment section, please write the number you are answering and then the letter of your answer. Again, number one, what is the largest province in Calabanzon in terms of land area? A. Quezon, B. Laguna, C. Rizal. 
okay so we will not go back to the text because you have to remember also you 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 have to hone your remembering skills so you can answer all these facts and details okay and dami okay tingnan natin kung tama ang sagot ng marami and most of you answered letter a quezon very good now how many cities and towns are there in quezon province a four cities and 39 towns B, three cities and 39 towns. C, two cities and 39 towns. We're now on number two. Okay. Meron akong unang, ay, Lizelle, I think Laguna is not the answer. It's Quezon Province. Okay, we're now on number two. Tingnan natin. Is letter C the correct answer? Tingnan natin. O parang wala namang sumagot ng ibang letter. And the correct answer is really letter C. Quezon Province has two cities and 39 counts. Just imagine, no, it's just, it's a place in Calabarzon, but within that, within Quezon Province, napakaraming uh, cities at napakaraming municipalities or towns. Well, now let's move on to number three. What is the capital city of Quezon Province? A. Tayabas, B. Kalilayan, C. Lucena. We're now on number three. Tingnan natin. O si Lord, si Dawang Sagot. Sabi ni Zyren, it's letter B, Kalilayan. Sabi ni Julian, letter B. I think, no, nag nagtatalo ang, ang mga sagot. It's either letter B or letter C. Tingnan natin kung ano yung capital city. It's not the first recorded name, ha? But the capital city of Quezon Province. And the answer is letter letter C, Lucena. I think Kalilayan is the first recorded name of the of Quezon Province. But the capital city is really Lucena. Now let's have number four. Before using its current name, what was the name of the province? So bago Bago yung present name ng Quezon Province na Quezon Province, ano muna yung name niya? Okay, what was the name? A. Tayabas, B. Quezon, C. Lucena. Okay, feeling ko na nasa, nasa probinsya din ako, no? Sa dami ng manok. Okay, now let's see. <laughs> let's see. No, okay, maraming sumasagot ng letter E and I think, oh, that is the correct answer. It's really Tayabas. So again, the first recorded name is Kalilayan. Second, naging Tayabas. Then to honor a very famous person in history, naging Quezon Province. Now for number five, who was the inspiration in changing the name of the province from Tayabas to its present name? Sino ba yung binigyan ng honor? Kasi he, I, I think... Napakalaki ng, uh, ng, ng importance ng taong ito, not just for Quezon province, but also in our history as a nation. Kasi he is the father, siya yung ama ng wikang Pilipino. So sino ba yun? Sinong, uh, sinong illustrious person ba ito no? na nagbigay ng honor sa Quezon province because he was our second president and he... He is the ama ng wikang Pilipino. Diba celebrate natin yan tuwing August? Because if I am not mistaken, August is, is it his birthday? Pero we celebrate, no? We, we celebrate the Filipino language in all its glory during August. Sino ba yun? Okay? Ang dami sumagot ng letter D and that is, very good. Tama naman. It's not Jose Rizal and Hermano Pule, but it's Manuel L. Quezon. Okay, no? So, napakalaking bagay na the, the, the Quezon province was named after him. Kasi it would be known that that province gave birth. That province was the residence of one of the best presidents in our history. Manuel L. Quezon. Okay? Siyempre, this is just a sample uh, for you to uh, improve your skills in understanding informational text. Kailangan, we have an evaluation. Okay? So, this will be our last informational text for today. And this is the ultimate test whether you can really understand informational text already. Okay? Tingnan natin, no? 
can you tell me ilan ang nakuha yung correct answers? Okay, let me check. Please be honest, no? In in telling me your correct answers, did did you get five, four, three, and below? It it doesn't matter. Teacher just want to to know if you are are ready ready to um to understand informational text. Marami na ka five like A Ross, Lord, um, Mary, Yana, Heavenly, Jovener. Si Marites naka four correct. Oh, don't worry, Marites, kasi meron tayong pambawing evaluation. Okay? Sabi nga natin, we should not be afraid of committing mistakes kasi um, our errors would be our learning points. Diba? Kailangan din natin nagkakamali para may, may, may natutunan tayo. Example, um, for me to listen well to the text when teacher reads the text. Second, for me to remember facts and details as, as many as I can because teacher will not go back to the text anymore. She will proceed to the questions right away. Yeah, ang daming naka-five. Like Ashley, ah, si Ahmed, naka-three. Don't worry, Ahmed. May, may pambawi tayo later. I think this time, no, you can um you can have more correct answers. Si Tala, four lang po, mali po ako sa number two. Okay, thank you for your honesty, Tala. No, kasi he or she said na number two siya mali. Okay, ayan. Pero maraming naka-number, uh, naka, nakakuha ng five. So for those who got five, to four, congratulations. For those who got three and below, wag tayong malungkot kasi meron pa tayo pambawi. Okay? So, dun muna tayo sa huling informational text that we will be reading today. Already na ba tayo? Okay. Already na ba tayo ha? Kasi ang ang dapat na makuha natin uh, for, for, for teacher to be confident that you really learn in this lesson, dapat makakuha tayo ng either three or four, because there will be only four questions in this informational text. Okay? So, listen carefully. Ang gagawin ni teacher, she will be reading the text twice. Okay? Twice. Okay, ready? So, yeah, I'll start reading the text now. A butterfly that, that you can also see on your screen, a butterfly has wings with different colors and structures. Butterflies have wings which are covered with many tiny scales. They have three main body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. They have taste receptors on their feet. They get nutrients by drinking mud from drinking from mud puddles. They see a range of ultraviolet colors invisible to the human eyes. Okay, that's the first time I'll be reading the text. The last time, let's have, let's have the text once again. A butterfly has wings with different colors and structures. Butterflies have wings which are covered with many tiny scales. They have three main body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. They have taste receptors on their feet. They get nutrients by drinking from mud puddles. They see a range of ultraviolet colors, invisible, that means they cannot be seen, by the human eyes. All right, so getting na natin ha. Since we have read the text twice, let's see if we can recall details and uh, answer questions about the text. Okay, let's have number one. What covers the wings of butterflies? Okay, you can on, on the comment section write the number and then the letter of your answer. A, tiny scales. B, tiny skin. C, tiny holes. Again. What cover the wings of butterflies? A, tiny scales. B, tiny skin. C, tiny holes. Okay, sabi ni Chino, letter A. Yeah, sabi ni Yana, same answer siya. With Chino, si Julian, letter A. Okay, tingnan natin if that is the correct answer. Really good. No, siguro under a microscope. Kasi di ba, pag... Pag mata lang natin yung ginagamit natin, hindi natin makita yung tiny scales. Siguro if if we see, if we use a microscope, we can really see that uh, that butterfly's wings are made or covered by tiny scales. That's up number two. Where can the taste receptors of butterflies be found? O saan po nakukuha ay saan nakikita yung taste receptors? Ibig sabihin ng taste receptors, yung body part nila na ginagamit to taste the, the things that they eat, where they stick or where they fly, where they stay. Okay, sabi na iba, C, 
Sabi ng iba, B. So, it's between letter C and letter B. Tingnan natin, what is the correct answer? And the correct answer is, the tiny receptors can be found in their feet. O, nasa paan nila, yung mga tiny feet nila, di ba? Nandun yung mga taste receptors nila. Okay, number three, how do butterflies get nutrients? Okay, saan ba sila kumukuha ng sustansya for them to stay healthy and for them to live longer? If I'm not mis mistaken, yung, yung ibang butterflies, isang araw lang yung buhay nila. No? A, by seeing ultraviolet colors. B, by drinking from mud puddles. Or C, by covering themselves. Well, right now, I cannot cover myself because it's too hot. Okay, let's see number three. Ang daming sumagot ng letter B. So, check na natin if that is the correct answer. And that is right. It's a correct answer from drinking from mud puddles. So, that's where they get their nutrients. Kasi ang alam ko na butterflies like salty, they like anything salty. Kaya minsan, no, dumadapo sila sa balat natin kasi yung sweat natin or yung skin natin may pagkasalty yan. Okay? Number four, what do butterflies see that are invisible to the human eye? So, ano yung nakikita ng butterflies na hindi natin nakikita? Because yung eyes nila din malaki yan, tsaka bilog. And it's differently, it's, it's differently made. No, if we, if we would compare it to human eyes, it's really different. So, what what do butterflies see that we cannot see? A, other butterflies. B, their wings. C, ultraviolet colors. Ayan, ang daming sumagot ng letter C. Let's check if that is really the correct answer. Let's see. Wow, tama. Ultraviolet colors nya. Now, sige nga. Can you tell teacher how many correct answers you got? Congratulations kung nakakuha kayo ng 3 over 3 or 4 kasi ibig sabihin um kaya na kung 4 kayang kaya na yung kung 3 I think kailangan lang ng counting practice pa kung 2 or 1 sa tingin ko kailangan pa talaga nating mag-practice no sa pagbabasa for us to be really to, to for us to have a good comprehension of the text that we are reading no Ay, ang galing naman ni Annie. 4 over 4 ulit, teacher. Sa ibig sabihin, naka-perfect score siya ulit. Ayan, congratulations. Ang galing, galing naman. I cannot really say all your names, but but I am now checking your score. So, ibig sabihin, no, lahat kayo ay nagpa-participate actively. Kung isa ang, ang mali, ibig sabihin, konting practice na lang, okay na. Pero kung 2 or 1, that means, no, kailangan pa natin mag-practice kasi understanding text that we are reading is really important nowadays kasi it's an information age, no? So, we need to understand and we also need to know how to use the information that we got from the things that we're reading. Oh, now, congratulations. That is a nice work, everybody. So, meron na akong mga na time. Ayan. So, meron ako mga na-feature last time na amazing grade 3 English learners. Now, if you want to be featured next time, what are you going to do? So, dito muna tayo. Take a selfie of you watching our episode for today and tell me a thing that you learned from the lesson. Send your selfie or selfies to my Facebook account that is May Sevilla, M-A-Y-S-E-V-I-L-L-A. So, what did we learn today? Let us summarize the things that we learned today. For, uh, and that is, informational texts provide data and details that help us know better the things around us. When extracting data and details from this kind of text, creating questions using WH questions, who, what, where, when, why, and how is effective and helpful. So, wag tayo mo frustrate kung nagkakamali pa tayo ngayon kasi comprehending text is really a skill. And if it's a skill, that means it will not be built overnight. It will be better through practice. And with teacher may definitely mag-practice tayo, magbasa, and understand text and the kind of text that we're reading. So let, if, if you want to be featured next week, just do the following instructions. So I hope that I will be seeing you next week. No, marami pa tayong magutunan. And wag tayong 
makakalimot na tumutok sa English 3 at sa iba pa, sa itulay session. Kasi for sure, maraming marami kayong matututunan. So have a nice day everyone! Bye! Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Itulay Free Online Tutorial Session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine Social Media Accounts. Paalam!